All right, welcome to the bottom line, a wrap of the business news of the day. And the markets were closed today, but a lot of focus on the parts of the economy that are opening up. Resailers are slowly opening their doors now that South Africa has moved from a level five to a level four lockdown. Edgar's stores open today, even though the retailer's holding company, Edcon, is struggling to survive. Edcon said it would apply for voluntary business rescue after it ran out of cash. The company was struggling before the coronavirus pandemic reached South South Africa's shores and it's lost billions since. Let's see how day one went. We're joined now via Skype by the CEO Grant Patterson. Grant, thank you for joining us. Uh, how did uh, the opening of, of stores go today? Was it Edgar's and, and Jet opening? Yes, we opened both our brands, Edgar's and Jet. Uh, it, it, it was a difficult day. Um, you know, we've been shut down for a month. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot to get up and running again. But I suppose everyone had that problem. We managed by the end of the day to open 590 out of our 730 stores. Uh, and certainly we did a brisk um, uh, business today, as one would expect. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say, are there customers with where their sales? Yes, in fact, um, you know, just measured on the same day a year ago, our sales were quite significantly up. As I say, that wasn't, uh, it wasn't a surprise uh, mm -hmm. because obviously there's a big pent up demand for winter clothing and, and winter bedding. How's it been preparing? Um, so, so Edgar's uh, Edcon running out of cash, but you've had to pay for things uh, needed to keep people safe. Have you managed to do that? Things like sanitizers at the doors? Yes, in fact, that was our priority, really. Um, it was firstly to get the personal protection equipment manufactured, uh, paid for, and sent to all the stores. And you can imagine uh, that in itself is quite a logistic uh, challenge. And then we already had the sanitizers from the pre-lockdown period, so that was all right. But then putting in the systems in place to make sure that the uh, the number of uh, customers in the store is monitored. And then also we had to obviously um, cordon off some areas where we're not allowed to sell the product. Yeah. And, and for people who haven't been following, I mean, just explain the situation. You, you said you had lost, I think, $2 billion since the start of, of the outbreak. Uh, you would need huge bumper sales uh, to sort of make that up, which is very unlikely. Yes, that's right. Um, uh, you know, from March the 15th, when we, you know, the first uh, social distancing measures were announced and then into the lockdown and the lockdown extension, Throughout that period, it kind of lost uh, 2 billion rands of sales, and therefore means that we owe about 2 billion rand in unpaid um, uh, uh, accounts payable. So, you know, unfortunately, Edcon has had to file for business rescue, which it did this week. Um, this means we enter into a new phase of our attempt to recover the business, um, one which is going to be led and coordinated by a business rescue practitioner. So, so the rescuers obviously will try their best, otherwise uh, the company will have to be liquidated or, or sold or, or something. Uh, how do you feel? Do you think Edcon can be saved? Well, you know, what I do is I look into it and I still see some really good assets. You know, we're, there's a core set of Edgers and Jet stores that are still very profitable. We've got a good financial services and insurance business. So there certainly are some valuable assets there. And I would um, expect... Although, you know, let me make it clear, I won't be in control that during the business rescue uh, process, others will see value in those assets and hopefully we can uh, have those assets continue, even though perhaps under a different ownership. What will your role be when those business rescuers move in? I, I presume they're already being lined up. Yes, the business rescue practitioners, you know, in the process, which is really to find a solution by are getting uh, all the stakeholders together, uh, creditors, employees, uh, shareholders, to try and figure out a plan and a solution and get everyone aligned behind that. That's their job. My job is to advise and assist the business, business rescue practitioners. Obviously, they don't know the business as intimately as I do. And ultimately, they make all the calls. So they replace the role of the board and the shareholder. Mm. Uh, Grant, I'm, I'm sure you've tried your best, but has it been really difficult to get people back in the door? Uh, some commentators say, uh, and have been saying for a while, that Edgar's has lost its relevance. Uh, there's just no reason to shop there, uh, given the better offerings elsewhere. Um, uh, just give us some insight in, into those efforts to get people back into stores. 
Yeah, you know, we think we have substantially uh, revised the offering in both Edgar's and Jet. And, you know, you know, if you look at the big centers, you know, somewhere like a Sandton City, that Edgar's store is absolutely massive and highly profitable in one of the most competitive markets. So I don't really think we've got a fundamental business model problem. I do think the market has shifted and there's space for less Edgar's than there were before. But on, on the other side, you know, Jet is a well-positioned um, format. So I think we were making some progress. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 crisis has put really shortened the runway that we had to turn around the business to essentially nothing. Yeah. So we've had to enter uh, the next phase. In the meantime, have staff members been paid? Will they be paid, uh, those who are back at work today? We paid 100% of, of salaries at the end of March. Uh, at the end of April, we didn't have the cash to pay uh, all the salaries. So we paid 60% of everyone's salary. And we have applied to the UIF COVID-19 PERS program. Our, our application has been accepted, and we're now waiting for that payment. The moment that payment comes through, which I would hope would be you know, in the next couple of weeks, um, then we will run the second half of the payroll and everyone will be paid 100%. So, so final question then. I'm sure there's so much anxiety amongst those workers. What have you been telling them? What, what are you trying to do to keep morale up? Yes, um, you're absolutely right. Incredibly difficult time for, for Edcon employees, as I'm sure there are other employees in the economy facing the same stresses. So what we try to do is communicate. Uh, obviously, that's quite challenging, uh, given that our usual method of communication to our, most of our employees who are staff-based employees is actually through the store system, and they've all been at home. So what we've encouraged them to do is come back to work as safely as they can and following the regulations. Let's try and make as much sales as we can, and that will give us the maximum amount of time possible to find a solution through Business Rescue. All right. Thank you so much for your time tonight. That was Edcon CEO Grant Patterson. And uh, amongst those retailers allowed to open for those winter clothes, footwear, uh, things that weren't allowed in level five lockdown. Uh, but of course, that company is struggling and now involuntary business rescue.